Hello, I'm Cody Coleman. And I'm Joe Beers. Welcome to Bethany at the Movies live here on the red carpet. No, it's this is just a green screen, Joe. We don't have a red carpet. Oh, no, no. This is live on the real red carpet. No, Joe, listen. Cody, I know that this is a green screen. I can see that this is a green screen. We're on but, a real red carpet. No, we're not. Matt, cut, cut down to the red carpet, please. Can you please cut down to the red carpet? Okay, see, Cody, it is a real red carpet, what I tell you. Wow, what was the budget for this? Uh, it was $10, that was seven ninety nine, and then we spent the extra money at Chambers on cold cuts. Oh, wow, well, on this production, we will be talking to you about the greatest movies of all time mm -hmm. and the actors and actresses that made them possible. Along with that, we're going to look at the famous movie lines in movie history, like... You talking to me? You talking to me? In other words, I'll make you an offer you can't refuse. Don't quit your day job, Cody. Seriously, that was really bad. First up at Bethany in the Movies. When you think of Bethany and movies together, you think of actress Frances McDormand, and luckily, student Riley Harrison has the story. Bethany is known as a small college of national distinction. It can now be known as a small college of global distinction. And the Oscar goes to... Frances McDormand, three billboards outside every Missouri. This is the second Oscar and fifth nomination for Frances McDormand. <laughs> so I, I, I think this is... If I may be so honored to have all the female nominees in every category stand with me in this room tonight. The actors, Meryl, if you do it, everybody else will, come on. The filmmakers, the producers, the directors, the writers, the cinematographer, the, the composers, the songwriters, the, 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 the designers. <laughs> come on. <laughs> This is where Frances McDormand started her career, right here in the Wales Theatre at Bethany College. Frances McDormand appeared in multiple productions in her time at Bethany. These included Of Thee I Sing 1978, as well as A Little Night Music in 1979 and Abelard and Heloise 1978. We spoke to Peter Jensen about his time alongside Francis whilst at Bethany. I would say that she was always of someone of very strong conviction, and she didn't just, she was not just sort of a glow, go with the flow person. Uh, she had strong ideas, and I, I know, and I wasn't directly involved, but I, I know that, that she had uh, strong beliefs in whether it was the, uh, uh, the roles or how uh, uh, certain plays were interpreted or things like that. She was not shy about her opinion. Furthermore, Peter said she always fought for better roles for women. We spoke to student Caroline Dudley about Frances's impact. It's really inspiring to be able to attend a school as Frances McDormand as she's an Oscar winning actress. She's really fantastic and it's nice knowing that she stood at the same place as I have around campus. This is an outstanding accomplishment in their respective fields. It has inspired students to believe anything is possible. I'm Riley Harrison, reporting. Her picture, Three Billboards Outside of Ebbing, Missouri, won longest movie title in history, but it was nominated for Best Picture, and it, it didn't win. You know what did win, though? The Shape of Water. I know, great movie. Now, if I remember correctly, that one's about a woman who falls in love with a fish? He's a fish man, Cody. Are you serious? Did you even see it? He's a fish man! Oh, so kind of like The Black Lagoon. Not exactly a box office smash, but hardly any of the Best Picture nominees are. Mm -mm. Like, why wasn't The Avengers nominated? Or why didn't Dumb and Dumber win Best Movie of All Time? Because it is. It is. It but really Kirsten is. Kirsten Rebels, luckily, has the story of why that's the case. Out of the nine nominations in this past Academy Awards, only two, Dunkirk and Get Out, were box office hits. Critically acclaimed films are typically ignored by the Academy. One that specifically comes to mind is Wonder Woman. No, but it's what I'm going to do. Communications professor Dr. Jason Smith says part of the reason might be a backlash sorts against action movies, which seem made to be marketed complete with action figures. You know, a lot of it depends upon global markets and what translates, which is usually like 
action adventure, mm -hmm. um, you know, that type of, uh, you know, violence definitely is able to go transnationally because you don't need the language barrier. So a lot of them don't have a lot of substance, I guess. Then again, it's like, as I said, if you're trying to sell more movies, just the virtue of selling more movies or merchandise along with the movies, that's not really caring about so much the movie as it is trying to sell the movie. So, um, again, very subjective. He also says that the Academy has 7,000 voting members who often see movies through the eyes of their own specialties, such as costume design and sound mixing. Um, it's, it's sort of, it's definitely very guarded. Um, it's not that it's mysterious, but it's, you know, it's very membership based. It's exclusive and, you know, what determines a better movie than another one is, is you know, I don't consider it being based on the numbers really or how much money it makes. Um, and I don't know why that is. I mean, uh, I, I mean, you'd think like one of the most popular films would be the ones that make the most money. As long as executives' primary interest is for making money and not winning awards, this trend will continue in the future. I'm Kirsten Rebels reporting. Because movies cost so much more nowadays, you could go to the theater and pay $15 for a 3D movie, making it really hard to know which one's the most popular. Yeah, I can't afford to go to a $15 movie. That is just absurd, Cody. Yeah, I mean, back in the day, you could pay a nickel for a movie, and there it is. It's not fair. It's not fair at all. But here's, here's what we'll do, okay? We'll make a list of the top 10 grossing movies of all time, but we'll throw inflation in there just yeah, to mix Yeah, I'll use inflation, yeah. All right? All right, we got Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. The Exorcist, Dr. Zhivago, Jaws, The Ten Commandments, Titanic, E.T., The Extraterrestrial, The Sound of Music, the first Star Wars movie, and Gone with the Wind. Using today's dollars, here's the list. Star Wars The Force Awakens, Avatar, Black Panther, Titanic, Jurassic World, Marvel's The Avengers, Star Wars The Last Jedi, The Dark Knight, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and Beauty and the Beast. Wow, Black Panther is in the top five? It just came out like in February. Unbelievable, right? Right. Linnell Willingham is going to have the story for us about how it's become a cultural phenomenon. Plenty to celebrate about the cultural phenomenon Black Panther, not only because of its box office success, but also its influence in the United States and all across the world. The movie reached new heights when athletes and celebrities began to do the Wakanda salute, paying homage to the strength, pride, and character of the African nation. I sat down with former Black Student Union President Khalid Pierce for his thoughts on the movie's influence. The film was very inspirational. Um, how could other races, not just the African-American race, draw influence from this movie? Influential not just to the African-American community here in America, but to all communities of all races and genres or, you know, backgrounds. Just the idea of different groups and nations coming together for a bigger cause and having something so powerful that they can share with the world. That was an idea that was formed when that movie came out, so I believe that was a big influence that hopefully people picked up on. You know, united group of different individuals coming together for a much larger cause eventually. That influence on nations worldwide, all the way to China, coming all the way back to South America, it was, it represents a united stand that we hope to see one day in the world and something that could possibly be, once again, as you can see, Ryan Coogler's film has already exceeded all expectations as far as influence and box office numbers, as it has already risen to the third highest grossing movie of all time. No Willingham reporting. You know, Cody, I don't really mean to hurt your feelings, but I don't like superhero movies. How? They're really boring and repetitive. Really? Yep. My favorite movie of all time is probably Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I mean, I'm a big fan of Ferris Bueller's Day mm -hmm. Off, but how do you not like these superhero epics? They're boring. They're amazing. Captain America... The Winter Soldier was probably the best one of all time. Yeah, I'll just take your word for it. Well, to settle this argument, we went on campus to ask students what they thought. We did. I would say my favorite movie is Training Day. My favorite movie was A Quiet Place. 
because they had no talking, but it was still amazing. Probably the Lord of the Rings. The reason why? Because what's not to like about the Lord of the Rings? You know? like everything about the Rings, you know, it's so interesting. You know, if I was, you know, a Hobbit, I would be. I would fit in perfectly. My favorite movie is Martian Child. It's on Netflix, and it's my favorite movie because it's a little boy who takes you from Mars, and that's so cute. So. Star Wars, hands down, uh, best movie ever. Favorite movie would be American Sniper. Uh, reason for it would be it's a great military movie, and love the military. Favorite movie of all time is Save the Last Dance because it has to do with interracial relationships and obviously uh, interracial mixed. And it has a lot to do with my life, and I love dance. My favorite movie is 21 Jump Street. Shout out Jonah Hill. Some of those choices had great performances by actors and actresses like Tom Hanks in Toy Story, Forrest Gump, Big, Castaway, and Philadelphia. And like Morgan Freeman in Bruce Almighty, Evan Almighty, Shawshank Redemption. Wow, you went with the Almighty's first. I did. Wow, that's really impressive. More recent. Yeah, well, we want to get everybody's opinion. So Matt Carini and Cassie Swihart went around campus to find out what everybody's favorite actors and actresses are. Everybody has a favorite actor. Mine is Heath Ledger. And my favorite scene he was in is the interrogation scene in Batman The Dark Knight. And why do you want to kill me? <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to kill you. What would I do without you? Go back to ripping off mob dealers? No, 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 you, you complete me. I also went around campus asking students what their favorite actor was and what scene they loved them in. My favorite actor would have to be Morgan Freeman. Hugh Jackman. Probably Robin Williams. Uh, I really like the energy he brings to each and every scene. I'd say my favorite character and scene that he played in was uh, in Goodwill Hunting. He has a scene with Matt Damon where he kind of just sits him down and explains that knowing everything doesn't make, doesn't make you appreciate everything. You know what occurred to me? No. You're just a kid. You don't have the faintest idea what you're talking about. Why, thank you. It's all right. The entire movie of Van Helsing. Um, the movie that he did with Invictus playing as Mandiba, as what we call him in South Africa, Nelson Mandela, is the opening scene in the movie when he was inaugurated into office and gave the famous speech about he wanted a South Africa to be a shining rainbow. But this is no time to celebrate petty revenge. This is the time to build our nation. You elected me your leader. Let me lead you now. So there you go. Everybody has their own favorite actor. That's what makes movies so great is they appeal to so many different people. And depending on the actor, it can draw a whole different crowd. I'm Matt Carini, reporting. And here's Cassie Swihart with the favorite actresses. My favorite actress is Jennifer Lawrence. Not only is she beautiful, but she's very talented. She won her first Academy Award for her performance in the Silver Linings Playbook. And the Oscar goes to Jennifer Lawrence. I got to catch up with some students to see who their favorite actresses are. I'd have to say my favorite actress is Keira Knightley. She played in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, which I'd have to say is my favorite series of movies. For the fact that she's just really beautiful, I don't really know anything about talents when it comes to actresses, mainly just beauty. You listen to me. Listen! My favorite actress would have to be Rebel Wilson, most known as Fat Amy. My favorite movie that she's in is Pitch Perfect. She's my favorite actress because she's a strong, independent woman, and she's very confident, and she's so funny. I just love her. My favorite actress is Robin Wright because uh, she plays Jenny and Forrest Gump and she plays Claire Underwood in House of Cards and both roles are phenomenal. Hello, Forrest. Hello, Jenny.
My favorite actress would have to be Halle Berry because she is such a strong black woman who gets such big roles and she plays them perfectly. And my favorite movie by her would probably have to be The Call. She goes and saves the kid and she takes it on upon herself as a 9-1 operator. You can't do this. You can't. It's already done. What? And there you have it. I'm Cassie Swihart reporting. I don't know if people want to admit it, Cody, but some people's favorite movies could be Disney movies. Some people like them so much, they'll put them in brackets like this one. That's crazy. Marlon Mejia is going to tell us what that's all about. Lion King versus Tarzan. Finding Nemo versus Ratatouille. Or Frozen versus Moana. This year, March Madness was not the only bracket circulating around the world. A Disney Pixar bracket has taken people by storm by pitting one great movie against another. Founded 94 years ago, Disney has continued to bless us with sequels, such as Toy Story 3. It is my favorite movie because um, it just hit me emotionally, and I felt like I kind of connected with the movie when I first watched it. Andy, he's leaving to college, and he's grown up now. He doesn't want to take his toys with him to college. Can you believe it? Mom, I'm not leaving till Friday. What are you going to do with these old toys? And he makes hard decision and he decides to take Woody with him since it was his first toy. And he puts all the other his toys in the garbage. But not to throw away, they were going to go in an attic. And his mom thought it was trash, so she takes it out to the trash. Uh, Lilo and Stitch is about this alien that was created in by an alien mad scientist. And then the alien crash landed in Hawaii. And this girl named Lilo like, adopted it and like taught it the values of being uh, Ohana or like family. What about Ohana? He hasn't been here that long. Neither have I. Dad said Ohana means family. Instead of like it being like a destructive creature, it turned out to like be super loving and caring because it found out how to like be part of their Ohana. My current favorite Disney movie is Moana. Moana is about a girl who was chosen by the ocean when she was a baby and she needed to go find Maui. So Maui was the guy who stole the hearts of Tafiti and he needed to replace the gem into the heart. I think Moana is a really good movie for little girls to watch because she's very empowering and she really believes in herself and she sails across the ocean and gets the job done. I am Moana of Motunui. Ohana and growing up. It feels like every Disney movie has a subliminal meaning that aims to teach its viewers life lessons. These brackets, including movies from over 50 years ago, have varied in style and lineups, with some focusing on strictly classics and others breaking off into different regions within the Disney universe. As for me, there is no question that The Incredibles is in fact the most incredible movie to be released by Disney. I'm Marlon Mejia, reporting. Do you feel lucky, punk? What, you talking to me? No, no, what we have here is a failure to communicate. It's the best movie lines bit. That's what we talked about. Oh yeah, well in that case, show me the money! Yeah, show us the top 10 best movie lines. You talking to me? You talking to me? Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. May the force be with you. May the force be with you. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. Go ahead. Make my day. He's looking at you, kid. Toto? I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. You don't understand. I could have had class. I could have been a contender. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. What happened to, like... Do you what? want answers? Well, I think I'm entitled to them. You want answers. I want the truth, Cody! You can't handle the truth! Well, you know who does have the truth? Daniel Booth went around and asked students what their favorite movie lines were. Those top ten lines are good. 
but I have some favourites of my own. I'll be back. No, I am your father. Bond. James Bond. Let's see what lines some of our fellow students like. Uh, my favourite movie line is from the movie Shrek and it's the gingerbread man. Oh, not the gumdrop buttons! My favourite mo movie line is run like the wind bullseye from Toy Story. It's from Talladega Nights. Don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby! Don't you put that on us! You can walk! My favorite film is The Lorax, and my favorite line from that movie is, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better, it's not. I'm Daniel Booth reporting. Here's looking at you, kid. Mm -hmm. Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. All right, thanks for joining us here at Bethany at the Movies, and you are already wrapping up the red carpet. Yeah. We didn't even sign off yet. Oh, well, as I roll this up, let's thank everyone who worked on this project oh, with us. Good idea. You know what? I think this just became the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Nope. Okay.